Hey everyone, and welcome to the uh, Tech Recruitment Podcast. I'm interviewing someone really, really awesome today. Uh, someone who is the member of the Tech Recruitment Academy. Someone who I know for already two years or so. Uh, time flies like crazy. So uh, he joined probably over two years ago. I, I remember when he joined as a premium, premium member, I onboarded him. He shared how he's transitioning to IT. And uh, it's so much fun now to just interview Alexander after these two years to see where he got after after those two years. So we will talk about the journey. We will talk about his sabbatical. We will talk about um, how was the transition? What were some of the obstacles he encountered in IT recruitment? So um, yeah, it will be fun. Um, I'm sure Alexander will share some of the uh, cool tips and tricks and best practices. So um yeah, stay tuned. And Alexander, uh, why don't you uh, tell us more about um, how did you actually got into IT recruitment? What, what was the transition? You worked as a non-IT uh, recruiter before, right? In, in some other field, not in IT recruitment. I was uh, mostly a uh, software sales recruiter and I recruited uh, salespeople, uh, business development, hunters, farmers, channels, all that stuff. So I had I had, had been pretty successful uh, with sales, and I joined a company, and I was uh, I had the title of director of recruiting. And when I came to this company, they didn't have they didn't do any sales recruiting at all. So they did a lot of manufacturing and mostly IT. So um, because they had also given me a client base, I had to get up to speed and learn something about IT. It didn't seem like I was doing sales recruitment anymore. So it was mostly IT. So that's when I, 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 I looked out into, uh, into your resource. And that's, that's, when, that's when you started exploring the whole IT world, right? Like there are so many different uh, programming languages and frameworks. So it may be a little overwhelming, right? Was it, was it also your case or did you have some IT background from the past? No, the only IT background I had was uh, being self-employed. I've been self-employed, uh, running my own show for like 20 years. And at one point I had like three or four employees. So I learned about uh, computers and networking. Um, other than that, I had um, a bit of an interest in IT, but, but no real, real knowledge in IT. When I started to get some of these job orders and when I started to see what the company was working on, I did find it uh, a little overwhelming because I didn't understand it at all. And then when I was going out looking for business, I, I really lacked the confidence. I couldn't understand anything at all, anything that I was looking at. And I, I just told myself, okay, with time, with time. But I've always found that uh, confidence comes with knowledge. So then once I got involved in your platform and started to, uh, look at your trainings and immerse myself, I realized that it doesn't have to be complicated or overwhelming. Um, the one big thing I got with you in the beginning was that just know, just have a grasp of some of the keywords. Uh, and then if you have an idea about the keywords and how they're related, then you won't sound like an idiot. Because I think everyone, well, in my case, if I picked up the phone and I had a conversation with someone, uh, my credibility is is in my knowledge. So if they're asking me some sort of, uh, or if I'm not able to ask the proper questions on on what they're looking for for an IIT candidate, I lose all the credibility. And then and and if I fail at that, and they they still want to work with me, then I have to call them back and ask some more questions. So I found that just your platform and 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 learning about the keywords and and what is related to what, um, I was able to like be on the phone. And I didn't sound, I didn't sound like a, a total idiot. And I would and I love the the mind maps uh, especially because I would just print them out, and I would just have them at my desk. I'd have a little bit of planning on who I who I wanted to call and and what kind of uh, IT position I was looking for. And a, just a quick glance at the mind map, and then when I jumped on the phone, and if I managed to get them, my my mind was fresh. So I took zero knowledge of IT. Uh, I moved into like being overwhelmed by it. And then uh, with uh, Geek Recruiter, 
uh, then I was able to uh, develop a much more confidence and then picked up, picked up IT roles. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's so um, inspiring, especially when you say that uh, confidence that comes with knowledge. I even wrote it down on a piece of paper because it's so, mm-hmm. so powerful. Right, just to keep it in mind, a lot of people seek confidence and they may not realize that it comes with knowledge. And um, also uh, what you just mentioned regarding the uh, interaction with candidates, you know, it's, it's so painful when you don't know what to ask a candidate and um, you can still probably just call them second time. It's not very comfortable, but still you can, but it's even more cumbersome with hiring managers, right? Like you want to be perceived as a professional, you know, who can actually fill the position and then you know you you may not really know what to ask. So um, it's uh, definitely great to go through the foundation to understand the IT terminology. Well, what were some other challenges that you had to go through and um, and somehow overcome um, when it comes to IT recruitment? Other challenges that I had in IT recruitment. Well, I was um, at the time when I started to learn about IT recruitment was because I mentioned I was uh, hired as a director of recruiting. So um, one of the challenges I had were training the employees. And I had jumped into a recruitment firm that had no training uh, whatsoever, and nor did they have any process at all. Um, so I had always, I guess I'm a, um, a bit of a neurotic recruiter where I'm really, I'm, really, um, I'm really into process. I'm really into like steps. And like this company didn't have it anything at all. So uh, I had noticed that when I started to get job orders coming in for IT roles, the, the, um, the IT recruiters, they would send me no information. They would send me uh, the resume and maybe two lines, um, very, very little information. And then I kind of wondered, um, do they actually know what, what they're doing? Um, so I, what I tried to do is I tried to take a combination of a lot of the uh, knowledge that I gained through you and also combine it with um, a recruiting process. So the, the challenge that I had with that was everything worked out really well because um, the information that you provide, everything is there. It's all there. You, you just have to be willing to spend the time to look at it and to train yourself. Um, but when you have, when you're working with um, recruiters who have no process and they have um, uh, habits and their habits are so deeply ingrained, um, it was very, very difficult. And I didn't have the authority to really do much besides try to, try to train. So, I mean, that was the one challenge I had. The one challenge I had is that senior recruiters IT recruiters that had their way of doing things uh, would not be open to merging uh, a process and deep diving deeper into uh, the IT role and the IT candidate. And I often found that it being in an environment like that where I was um, responsible for training, but I was also responsible for running a desk and managing clients, I always had to go back and forth with the recruiters because they didn't take all the information down. Um, even if I had a, a really well-defined uh, job order with all of the uh, must-haves and uh, technology stack uh, experience, I'd pass it on to them and it would just like go right over their heads and I'd still get wines. So it would became a big time waster, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, major time waster. So uh, that was the challenge. If I had like someone brand new to do it, uh, I think it would go uh, much more smoothly. Um, and uh, so I, and I'll let you know, because I, I've, I've um, as I've mentioned to you prior, I have, um, I have returned to my recruitment practice. I took a couple of years off when um, the COVID thing happened. Uh, it essentially killed my best client. And then I was, then I thought, okay, well, this is it. I'm just going to like I'm going to take a break and and try something else. I like to try different things. So I I, uh, took a break. So now in uh, 2022, um, now it's time. And it's like, okay, great. And now I still have access to all this wonderful IT stuff. So now I don't have any habits, or I I don't think I have any habits because it's been a couple of years. So now I get to create some new habits. 
Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to it uh, and being able to know what I've known before and all the new things that um, I'm learning uh, about IT. So it's, um, it's really interesting. So hopefully uh, I can build my own company and then train some fresh people without the habits. Um, and then there shouldn't be any, any difficulties because recruiting is not that hard. Well, it, it is hard, but I mean, you just have to ask the right questions. You just have to talk to people and ask the right questions and find the right people who are, who are looking to leave. And if you're not asking the right questions, then you're wasting everyone's time. Wow, well, man, you, you mentioned so many different, uh, uh, different sentences or phrases that I'm trying to capture it. And just the last one, when you said in one sentence, it's not hard, it's actually hard, is just uh, so true. Because um, like if you really break it down, it's not that hard to source candidates, to screen CVs, uh, to ask a few questions. Like you don't really have to code in Python to screen a Python developer. Um, but at the same time, it's so hard for people who have, haven't taken the time, as you said, to, uh, to go through the basics, to learn the stuff. And this is actually um, probably one of these issues, especially with people who have been doing it for some time they are just not willing to go through this practice of just visit uh, several profiles and um, and uh, and um, just absorb the uh, the stuff so um, sometimes it's easier as you say just take someone from the street just they know that they don't know anything and they just learn they absorb um, hopefully if, if they are willing to take the time yeah, yeah and I think um, a key thing is preparation when you have your, when you have your when you have your job order, um, then then you take the time to prepare. Um, have your job order uh, in front of you. Um, uh, take a look at what the technology actually is. Like look it up. Just take a little bit of time. I, I know you want to go out there and get candidates right away, but just take a little bit of time to to kind of get some sort of understanding, some really basic basic knowledge on the technology. Um, and all, as well with the with the company, what the um, what the company is doing, so just a little bit of preparation, and um, go over your profiles, and you know find the start with the best matches first, and 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 try it, try to get in touch with them. I, I know that like the hardest thing for me, um, the last time when I was doing IT recruiting was just like getting in touch with people. Uh, people do not seem to want to answer a telephone and then it's hard to get them on the telephone and a lot of companies don't even list their telephone number and then you're playing this game with emails and then the next thing you know the the candidate has received a hundred emails already um, <laughs> in demand uh, so the thing is it's you know it's it's really easy to find like the profile on LinkedIn it's easy to just prepare that's not hard it's just just this takes your time. You're blessed with time, so just take the time. The, the hard part is actually getting people um, at the right time, at the right place, and who, are, who will answer the phone or who will respond to the email. So, mm -hmm. but you know what, we, we just have to be, uh, we have to be a little crazy. We have to keep going for it. We have to just keep pushing ourselves. But mm -hmm. I mean, as long as you have all those things, you know, we talked about not being perfect. You're never, gonna, you're never going to fill every job. Um, but at least, you know, you put your, your full effort in, in each one you get. Yeah, yeah, so true, so true. And uh, you mentioned um, phone. So what's your, what's your approach? Uh, do you um, call candidates? Uh, do you cold call? Do you first message them or do you WhatsApp them? What, what's your approach? For, for candidates? Mm -hmm. um, well, for candidates, my first approach would be to call them. I would... Uh, no, actually, that, that's not true. With my candidates, I would send an email first because I I learned in IT recruiting, uh, if someone is happily in, uh, employed and you're calling them at work, and this was different from salespeople because I could call a salesperson at work and they will talk to me all the time because for them, it's all about what situation, uh, can I change a situation that I'm in where I can wake, make way more money? So salespeople are very, they call it coin driven. <clears throat> so they really, they're all, they just want to make money. Um, but, in, but that's a different candidate from an IT candidate. Like an IT candidate is more about uh, 
seems about like excitement and, and what they're doing and the projects and the technology and maybe like how they can change the world maybe. Um, so a lot of times I found that cold calling a candidate um, wasn't well received, not always, <clears throat> but not, but um, most, a lot of times <laughs> it wasn't really appreciated. Hey, like I'm at work and, you know, and, and then they felt I would put them in an awkward position and I'm, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, I'm really sorry. So then I kind of found that there was a bit of a process to it. Um, you know, like sending, um, you know, I, I could start with a, a LinkedIn message, send it off, give it a couple of days, um, or like a connection request, and then put a LinkedIn message in the connection request. That's like a little bit of a, <clears throat> a cheat. Um, and then, or I could send, I could wait three days or four days, and maybe just send an email, figure out what the email um, addresses for the company and you know they're all really about this the same so I'd send an email and then at that point if I didn't get a, a, a message received and they were they had to be a star candidate um, you know they had to fit the criteria for the role and they couldn't be a jumper so and that so the, a candidate like that requires extra time like they're worth pursuing they're worth talking to even if you don't have the even if they're not interested they're worth pursuing a relationship with because they have everything that you need and, and they, they especially just don't jump. And there's a, a nice progression in, in their career. And then if everything failed, then I would have to call them at work. Um, or if I had a, if I had, um, I don't currently have a service, but I used to have a, a service before that provided me a lot of times on um, email addresses and phone numbers. So if I could find us, if I can get a cell phone number, then I would call them on their cell phone. And if I didn't have a cell phone number, then I would just call directly and I would just try to reach out to them. Because really, if, you know, trying to get, contact them from that whole process could take, could take like two weeks. So, you know, and you have a, you have a job order and you're competing with other, other companies. It's like, you can't afford to not have a candidate like within two weeks. I know it's like, it's to get a dream candidate in two weeks is really great as it is. But I mean, you really have to like, you really have to get in touch with that person. So at the end of two weeks and I would just call them at work and I would leave voice messages and I would just continue to call until they talked to me. And, you know, hopefully they didn't think I was stalking them, but, you know, in terms of preparing, I would just let them know, look, I just, I just think you're terrific. Um, I really didn't mean to come across as like hounding you. I know you're so busy. I just have an opportunity to share with you. If it's not the right time, I totally respect that. But I really do think you're great. I would like to talk to you down the road when, when you're looking, maybe I can add value to your, your career search in the future, you know, stuff like that. So just really being diligent with, with the superstar candidates. Very, very interesting. And it's clearly visible that you are coming with this uh, sales approach, or, you know, you've been hunting salespeople, and um, you can reuse some of these principles, because what I, what I noticed with also some of our colleagues uh, in, in our internal recruitment team is that their threshold to approaching candidates is much lower than mine and mine is lower than yours, right? Like you are going all in, like, you know, if you don't respond here, then I'll message you from here. And then if you don't, you know, um, respond to that message, then I'll call you. And then if I don't have number, then I'll call the receptionist and I'll just get hold of you somehow. I don't know how, but I'll just find a way. You know, I'm not there just yet, um, but uh, that, that sounds awesome. But a lot of our colleagues are just like, well, I'll just send one message. And if the candidate doesn't respond, then probably that's it, right? So, so we are trying to push them at least to send, I know, two messages, three messages, follow up, not even to call. Uh, but um, what, what would be your recommendation based on your past experience also with working with your colleagues, how to, how to get people who may be afraid of approaching one person too many times, how to overcome this uh, obstacle? How to overcome the obstacle? Well, I think it's um, I really just having a, a process in place. So if I had a team of recruiters and I had a process in place, I would say, well, this is the process. And then when I would review it with, uh, when we would go over the job order, if there was a, a recruiter assigned to a, a specific job, we would talk about um, you know, how it's going, who, who have they talked to, and uh, where are they at. And if there wasn't a lot of 
if, if there was a lack of results, then we would just look at the process that's in place. Um, because like, uh, you know, you take step one and I mean, it's kind of robotic in a way, but it's just, it's just there. And, and if the entire company uh, follows it, um, you know, then, then the whole company has a, an, an internal process. Uh, but at any rate, I would just, I would train over the process. Okay, well now it's time to do this and now it's time to do that. Um, and again, I think it's a lot of a lot about habits. I've done it this way a long time, and this kind of works for me. And I've been able to make a a, a decent living at it. And you know, um, and I'm in demand. I'm a recruiter. I'm in demand, so I can keep getting away with that. Um, but I think that uh, I, I think a great recruiter, um, and even a great IT recruiter, I would recommend just learning business development. Um, just it doesn't have to be their job, but just to to learn a little bit, learn a little bit about sales, uh, because ultimately, even if we're an IT recruiter, we are a salesperson as well, because we have to close the candidate, we have to get their interest, like we have to put our messaging that is going to like you know raise an eyebrow and they're like, oh, I think I want to talk to you. So just a little bit of of um, sales experience, just. Maybe just doing some cold calls, some calling clients, or whatever new clients, and um, so I would really recommend that. I would recommend a, a, a combination of just a little bit of sales training, um, and and a little bit of um, or a lot of following a process. That's a, that's a great suggestion. Like I guess I also ask some of our colleagues to do a little business development just uh, on the side, just to get this uh, practice from the uh, sales. Uh, kind of things uh, cool cool okay and you also mentioned that you are now transitioning to um, IT recruitment to restart your practice again and um, you probably will build a team in the near future so um, what what do you envision have you already absorbed um, how has the market changed over the last two years since you were sort of off and now you are on the market again what, what are some of the uh, changes that you've observed on the market in the United States, especially, right? Or in Canada. No, sorry, you're in Canada, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm in Canada, but I'll work in uh, North America um, and worldwide if I have the opportunity. Um, the Nothing really looks too different. Um, I think that, and it's still it's still very early days for, uh, for me because I'm like getting all my training material and getting my pitch and I just I just got my office. Uh, actually, today I get my office today. I don't have the internet. Yada yada yada. Um, I think that what I find really interesting because of, you know the world has changed a lot in the last couple of years, and um, I've heard this thing over the last couple of years outside of recruitment because I haven't followed anything in recruitment in the last couple of years. But I, I keep hearing about this fourth industrial revolution. Um, and I believe like this fourth industrial revolution will have to do with like robotics and, uh, and AI and uh, the re really the replacement of people and robots taking over, their, taking over their roles. So as I started to do some preliminary research, <clears throat> I've, I've noticed that it's been, I don't know if it's been rebranded or been renamed or it just had a nicer name, but now I hear it as Industry 4.0. So not the industrial, the fourth industrial revolution, industry 4.0. So um, that has me intrigued. Not that I agree with it, um, but I don't think that that's going to be stopped anytime soon. I think the technology is there, um, even with the robotics to replace people on a lot of different roles. I would just like, uh, I, the only part I don't agree with is that the people need to be taken care of first. You know, if the people are going to be replaced with robots, then we need to do something with these people where they're not sitting at home watching TV and not contributing to society. So I think like when this rolls out, I think we need like a, a plan for people to help people. Um, but you know, uh, technology is progress, and robotics, uh, it, you know, if if used well and for the good of mankind, then great. Um, I don't think it's going to be stopped, regardless what happens in the world. I don't think it's going to be stopped. So I'm I'm really keen on this, on learning more about this and seeing where I can um, where I can get in there because I think it's really important for us to get on this on these hot technologies. Um, and I'm really I'm really big on um, uh, the blockchain. 
um, you know, as someone who um, started to explore uh, cryptocurrency and started to um, see the potential of the blockchain, not just for cryptocurrency, but even for something like voting um, and decentralized technology. Uh, so I, I find that really, really fascinating. And I think that that technology um, can be used um, uh, good for, for the world and for humanity. So I'm, I'm really keen to, to learn more about that and to see which companies uh, were, are actually wanting to make a positive change for the world and, and hopefully, and hopefully work for them and, and develop a candidate, candidate pool. Um, so I think for me in, in the beginning, as much as like, I'll do my cold calling and, I'll, and, I'll, 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 and I'm starting at the top this time. So any recruiters out there watching this and who are coming back into recruiting, don't start at the bottom. Start at the top. Don't work. Don't work your way up. Work your like. Work your way down. So start start at the very top. So I'm still gonna like put myself out there and, and call those people. But at the same time, when I discover what the really exciting technologies that I feel are, are are exciting, and and what's hot and and what's the future, then at that point, you know, then I'll I'll I'm on the side. I'll just try to be building a talent pool um, for those uh, for for the people who are really gonna be needed in the future. Yeah, I hope I answered well, your question there. <laughs> well, the industry 4.0 it just reminded me that um, you know, as, as you mentioned, it will never you know stop uh, just because after industry 4.0, there will be industry 5.0, right? Just the technologies will change, but they will not disappear. So we can only expect more and more technology, and with that comes more and more opportunities in IT. So it's really a great place uh, to be at um, the IT recruitment space. Um, so um, now, now you are transitioning. Now you are setting up. You have the office. Uh, you will have the internet soon, or you probably got it today, so that so that we <laughs> we met now, right? Or or maybe you are through a hotspot. Um, yeah, I'm, but, st I'm um, still in my home. I'm still in my home office. But luckily, I got <laughs> my children to be quiet, so that's good. <laughs> cool, cool. They are helping helping us here. So how how do you envision uh, to get some clients on board? You know, like just to to give you a. Um, some uh, some little background on this. Quite a lot of um, people inside the Tech Recruitment Academy go through the training. They are ready, but they feel like um, they don't really know how to get clients. So, with your past experience, um, what will be your first step? Like, how will you really get the first, second, and third client? Well, um, I think it's a combination. Um, so, you have to go after the low hanging fruit. So the low hanging fruit are the jobs that are posted, the jobs that are posted on Indeed. I mean, that's the low hanging fruit. So you find out what's available on Indeed, and then you find out who your the contact is. So my approach would be to contact the hiring manager first, and then um, then I would contact the um, HR manager, which uh, which would be a last resort. I don't want to talk to HR. I love HR, they're, they're all beautiful people, but I would prefer to talk to the, the person that makes the decision. So I would just start with low hanging fruit on Indeed and I would just call. And you know, it's gonna be timing is everything because you can call, um, you can call the, like the director of engineering and yeah, the job's been posted for two months. Um, and he's like, really, so don't like, even though if it's been posted for two months, still make the phone call because even though, even um, it's been two months, you don't have any idea how difficult it is for him to or her to have filled that position. So, you know, timing is everything. Maybe you get them and it's like, hey, you know, man, I'm having a real hard time. Here is a job order. So I would just I would just go and go after the low hanging fruit. And also it's really important to put it in a CRM of some sort um, or a spreadsheet just to make sure that you are following a process where you're going to you're going to get an answer. So for me, it was always like, I had to get an answer. I got to get a yes or I got to get a no. And um, if, I, if I see in my, in my CRM that I've reached out to them 10 times, chances I'll take that as a no. If it's been 10 times, I'll take that as a no and I'll move on because then it just becomes a big waste of time. So I would start with just the, the low hanging fruit. And then at the same time, I would just um, start at the top and just try to, just try to build some relationships. And, you know, and it would all be all about uh, if I called, like, say, if I called, like, we'll say with the director of engineering, I'll call the director of engineering. There's no job orders or whatever. If 
but you know, I'll call and I'll ask what he's looking for. What's his dream job? And then I'll start a conversation and we'll talk all about him and we'll talk all about his career. And if I can get him on the telephone and he's willing to give me this information, then I have learned, um, uh, I've learned a lot about him and I could possibly find a job for him. Uh, because if, especially if he's a superstar candidate, there's one big thing in recruitment, a strategy that always works. It's tried, tested and true. It's called an MPC, most placeable candidate. So if you find a superstar that um, does, that, that's busy and they don't have the time to look for a job, but they're a superstar and they're interested and they've told you what your dream job is. You gather that information, you create a little bit of a sales presentation and you take that and you call someone, a competitor or somebody, and it's like, hey, you know what? I have this candidate who's like this, 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 and this. Uh, would you be interested in talking to them? You know, and, and so it's confidential. So they got to sign a, uh, they got to sign an agreement before you give any information because you can't break your confiden confidentiality. So I would be starting at the top. So the low hanging fruit and start at the top and develop some relationships with these hiring managers, find out what their dreams jobs are. And if you're able to develop a bit of a relationship, you can, it could go two ways. They could possibly give you a job order that maybe wasn't listed or, or they could even tell you about what their, you know, what their plans are. If you find out what their plans are, then great. You then you're ahead of the game. You can find people before anyone else does. Um, or you can, you can, if they're interested and they've given you their dream job, then you can go look for work for them. And a lot of times what happens is that when you're marketing candidates, um, they'll, if, if they, if you get them and they're listening to you and you're presented yourself quite well, they might not need the candidate, but they have something else that they're looking for. So that would be my approach, but the best, best way to do it is marketing candidates by far. Go after the low hanging fruit. Yeah, but like find, try to find the superstars and, and just form those relationships. And maybe you, you won't be able to market them right away, but it's okay, you, you, have, to, you have to make relationships. Um, and I think that, and I don't know if people are job hop, hopping the way that they used to, but that was always a really big problem. So there was always a real lack of real super, super quality candidates. So, you know, when you find those super quality candidates, you, you nurture that, that relationship. And, you know, you, you do this for the long term. Do this for the long term and, and create those relationships. And, and, and success will just follow. You just have to do those, those things and, and you'll get clients. I promise you. Awesome, awesome. Well, it just reminds me. It <laughs> just reminded me how we said that the recruitment is not easy. Actually, recruitment is hard, you know, or, or the other way around. So um, as, as you say, like the process worked, it's, um, it's tested. So um, why don't more people just follow it? So that's, that's a great advice for, for everyone inside the Tech Recruitment Academy. And um, okay, so uh, um, this is clearly interesting. And now I'm just thinking a step further, what, what exactly, um, like what kind of roles are we even talking about? So like, yes, we want to build up the, uh, you know, awesome candidates, those uh, MPCs. So, but should we start with uh, managers? Should we start with developers? Should we go after Python developers, backend developers, front end? What like there are so many IT roles. So people may be a little overwhelmed. Uh, how how would you approach it? Like, assuming you will get your first three five MPCs, what where do you start? What positions will you focus on at first? Well, um, through the Tech Recruitment Academy, um, there's a you have some wonderful training on uh, CTOs and CIOs and and really and managers. Um, so for me, uh, I my plan is to go through all of that training, know it to a T, and those are the people I'm going to start with. Like I said, I'm going to I'm going to start with the at the top. Um, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I think I missed some of your question. Uh, no, 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 like that. That's great. So you will start with the C-level executives, like CTOs, CIO, and you will build up the the, the talent pool of executives at first. You will start right. with them. You will build up their right. profiles, and yeah. then you will try to sell them on the market in other companies. Cool, Correct. Cool. And I and you know I think it's you have to remember 
Now it depends what your situation is. Like for me, I'm just, I'm a solo practitioner. So there's only a certain amount of time that I have and there's only a certain amount of uh, roles that I can work on, but the best bang for your buck is to pick something. Pick one or two, if, if you're on your own, pick one or two um, type of positions and, and they could be hot positions or whatever, you know, just pick a couple. We'll make sure that there's, you know, go on Indeed. Like you have a great uh, course that I saw recently on IT talent pool, where you put it all in a spreadsheet and um, you put the titles and the number of jobs on on um, Indeed and your, your connection. It was really, really, really terrific, uh, terrific training module. Um, so, but for me, when I look at it, it's like, okay, I'm one person. I only have an, a certain amount of time, but I need to maybe be an expert in like a couple of jobs not be an expert on, on all the jobs. If I'm a, a full desk recruiter where I'm also getting my clients and I'm marketing. Um, so I would start like with one or two jobs and just try to find the best people out there and just network, network Java developers, you know, for example, or, or network with uh, backend developers, CTOs. I would just focus on, on one or two and develop your, really, really develop that talent pool develop that talent pool enough where even if like you have a you started a relationship with them and there's like nothing going on like you got they got nothing to talk about you got nothing to talk about like you can't call them all the time like they're not they're busy they're working you don't have anything at the moment is that's perfect for them anyways but you know you give them a call in three months or you send them a note in three months um and then you just you you know you keep building relationships on and developing your talent pool but i and i would just really start with with a few positions um that, that's that that would be my approach i think that's probably more of a relationship driven approach um and i that's what the one thing that i found with it um when i worked at, at that firm was that it, it seemed to be very transactional it was like okay this is all a transaction i got a job order okay and uh here's the paper okay now you give me paper it was just it just seemed very transactional and you know, and people didn't get to know the the candidates at all. Um, so to me, it's like take a relationship driven a, a relationship um, approach, and get a, just go after a couple of titles. Um, you know, and and just really just develop it. And and of course, like work in a, work in areas and recruit the kind of people that you kind of have a, some sort of interest in. You know, I mean, there's all sorts of amazing technology out there. And I think that if you're going to be a successful IT recruiter, you should like IT. <laughs> you, you should it should excite you a little bit. So find something that excites you, and then it'll be much easier to talk to um, clients with that skill set. Because hey, I'm really interested in that that technology. I'm really interested in what that technology is is going to do for that corporation, and what that technology is going to do, you know, possibly for the world. So that that would be the uh, that, that would be the approach that, that I would recommend. Oh, cool, cool. And you also mentioned you should be excited about IT, you know, so, um, so that's, that's so true. Like uh, you should really be. And I see that you are excited about, about IT, about blockchain, about some of these uh, new technologies. So yeah. uh, that's, that's a great advice to, uh, to anyone who is just uh, transitioning to IT or even has been in IT recruitment for some time, but haven't really seen the results. So this may be the reason why, right? Like maybe they are just not, excited or passionate enough about IT, not interested enough about the IT stuff uh, in general. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. So um, well, you, like just, I, if, if I, if I, if I mm -hmm. could just throw in there, it's like when you're on the phone and when you're talking with someone, and I believe probably even via email or texting, um, you know, there is a certain tone. So if you are calling people, if, if you're actually on the telephone and calling people, and you have an opportunity to send to them, you, there has to be some sort of level of excitement. There has mm -hmm. to be some sort of level of, of motivation and eagerness. And all of that comes through your voice. It's all through your voice. So, I mean, you really, you, you, you really have to have some sort of, 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 of zest for IT. And maybe if you don't have zest for IT, at least have a real zest for people and wanting to help people. So, I mean, those things are critical and you have to carry that with you throughout your working day. It's really important to carry that. And even, and that'll, that'll show throughout your text, that'll show through your, your messages. 
It's all in your mood and it's all in your behavior. Um, and it's, it's just how you carry yourself and, and how motivated you, you want to succeed. So uh, I just want to throw that in there because that, that's highly mm -hmm. important, like, you know, to, to have some sort of passion that'll just come through your, your voice. Mm, so cool. So cool. That's, that's uh, such a valuable advice. So uh, before we wrap it up, is there any, say, um, last advice that you would like to give to people who are just uh, about to transition or just uh, in the middle of some kind of transition or they consider some sort of a career change um, and uh, they see IT as something interesting, they uh, would like to, you know, uh, put their a toe in the water or what's the phrase in, in the united states <laughs> so what would be your final advice yeah well um if they're interested in it um the um, uh the uh your platform the uh, tech recruitment uh, academy it recruitment academy um is totally the way to go it's a bargain i gotta tell you i love your platform I love your platform. And when I'm on there and I see the other people on there, I'm like, cool. And then when I see you on there, I'm like, okay, that's cool. So I, I, I highly recommend just for confidence alone, it's a really good investment to jump on this platform and to learn. And you don't have to know anything at all. You can just learn. If you're willing to learn and willing to spend the time to, um, to further your career as an IT recruiter, by far, like this is the best advice I can give to you. To go on this because if you're going to do it on your own you're going to take it's going to take you so much time michael has spent uh it's obvious and over the years he's added more and more content so i would you know totally take advantage of this resource um you'll it'll be a really great help uh guaranteed um so that, that would be my my best advice um oh man i got a lot of advice what other advice can i share <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can just tell you that um, I started as a recruiter as an uh, well, I started off as a financial recruiter, and this was about 18 years ago. Uh, and then I moved to IT recruiting, funny enough, and I only did it for a short time back then. Um, and I did fill jobs, which is really cool. But when I had taken that job uh, 18 years ago, I was. Um, making minimum wage. Before this job, I was making minimum wage. I had debt, I had student loans, and I worked for a lousy company. I didn't swear, I worked for a really terrible company. Um, that was prior to getting into recruiting. And then I was able to like sell myself into getting a job in a recruitment agency. So I have to tell you, even though that I've done different things in between. And I just had that luxury because I was self-employed. I only worked for a recruiting agency as an employee uh, for one year. And that was my first job. And then afterwards, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this for myself and I'm just going to be self-employed. So, I mean, I've had the luxury of being self-employed and like taking breaks and pursuing other things and, you know, coming back whenever I'm ready, whenever I was ready. So a, a career in recruitment um, is a real blessing. Because for me, uh, it took me from minimum wage to a place where I could pay off all my loans, uh, I could buy a house, um, I could have the freedom uh, to like take two years off, you know, or take a year off for six months or, or you know, whatever, whatever it is that I wanted to do. So um, just remember that you're really blessed to actually have your foot in the door. Uh, so if you have your foot in the door and you're, uh, and especially with IT, like you, you can't, to me, IT is like the, the least risk in terms of recruiting because IT is still in demand. And, and incidentally, uh, I'm getting the impression that recruiters are in demand. Uh, I see some LinkedIn posts for recruiters who um, recruit recruiters who are overwhelmed with job orders for recruiters. So um, anyone in this line of work, we're very, we're in a very, very good place. So, you know, just nurture your career, um, uh, be motivated to succeed, join up with the Academy and, uh, and, and live a great life. I, I don't know how else to put it.
that was so powerful uh, final thoughts so inspiring and uh yeah it's just uh i feel so energized now after after this talk um awesome. with you it's just uh you know i feel like calling a few candidates even if they don't respond i'll just follow up with them you know with second third fourth message do it <laughs> so do it cool. so cool <laughs> awesome awesome cool thanks thanks alexander thanks a lot for for all your insights and uh, suggestions and uh, best practices and uh, tips and tricks it's been very val valuable so uh, i'll see you inside the academy and You're other members as well You're would you would you like to share some some website or a linkedin profile or something where people can find you if they would like to get in touch with you some potential clients you know sure sure um you can find on linkedin uh my linkedin profile my username is al dallas a l d a l l a s so linkedin.com slash al dallas uh, and yeah and thank you for uh, thank you for your time and, and keep up the great work i'm looking forward to new stuff <laughs> thank you thank you have a wonderful day goodbye all right take care bye, bye.